Start small, think big. Hey, special educators, it's Jennifer from Positively Learning. That's my number one piece of advice during the busy back to school season. We're going to apply that advice to setting up your independent work systems for success. This is a great episode to listen to at the beginning of the school year. However, if school is already in full swing, no worries. These tips are helpful for any time your systems need a refresh or if you're troubleshooting a system that could be a little bit better. Let's go. Hey, special educators. I'm Jennifer from Positively Learning. Welcome to the Special Educators Resource Room. If you're like me, you're always looking for ways to save time and streamline your work. That's why this podcast was created, to give you the systems and solutions you need to get your time back. Tune in for tips, tricks, and tools that will help you manage your workload and make the most of your time. Whether you're brand new or experienced, all are welcome in the Special Educators Resource Room. Thanks so much for tuning in. A few housekeeping notes. One, this is episode 89, and I have a special podcast announcement at the end of this episode, so stay tuned. And two, I just wrapped up a series of free workshops all about setting up your independent work systems. It was called Task Box Magic. However, the tips would have worked for any independent work system, whether you're using file folders or work binders. I had a lot of fun with these workshops, even more fun than I was expecting because I was feeling really nervous about them, but it was so fun talking back and forth and hearing your questions and chatting all things independent work systems. And now I kind of miss it. People have been asking when the next live workshop is, and I don't have anything planned because it's busy back to school. So I'm going to put a Google form in the show notes, and I would really appreciate it if you would provide some feedback. Do you want to see another live workshop? What topic would you like to learn more about? Send me your questions, ideas. Maybe you do want another workshop, or maybe there's something else in mind. I cannot wait to hear your responses, and thanks in advance for filling out the Google form. Now let's head into today's topic. We're going to be talking about starting small, thinking big, and setting up your independent work systems. We're going to give every student a fresh start. Let's briefly define what an independent work system is and why it's so important. An independent work system can be a structure that you have set up in your classroom. It's a routine, and students are running this routine. As much as possible, you want students working independently. So this could look like students accessing a task or an activity that they're going to be doing, getting started, initiating that task on their own as much as possible, working on the task, completing the task, putting away the task, and getting started with the next task. Sounds pretty magical, right? I first became interested in setting up a system like this when I was looking for a solution to what I was already trying to do. I was pulling groups during a rotation. I had stations set up that my students moved among and I was pulling small groups. So I had a listening station, library, uh, independent centers using traditional centers. I was working so hard helping my students move from station to station and it just was not successful. Instead of starting small thinking big, I was starting big and thinking what in the world? I don't even know. I found that when I switched all of my students to an independent work system, which was pretty much out of desperation at the time, it was so much better. I was meeting my students' independent needs, not instructional, not frustrational. I was meeting my students where they are so they could be successful. I thought I was giving up on centers where my students would be interacting with each other. But you know what? It just wasn't happening. Independent work systems was where it was at. It was a much simpler system for me and for my students. They thrived. I started small and then I started to think bigger. If independent work systems were so successful during rotations, where else could we apply this magic? Morning work, independent work, performance tasks. Whenever my students needed a break, I even put task boxes into our calming corner. So as you can tell, I'm pretty passionate about this topic, but for now, we're gonna be talking about how you can get them set up and we're gonna start small. Whenever you're introducing the system to students, whether it's at the beginning of the school year or any time it's going to be new for them, I suggest starting with just a few task boxes. 
These tasks are at students' independent level. They should be simple and they can be familiar or high interest to students. The goal is to introduce the system, not the actual skill that the task is tackling. Our other goal is to have students experience success and build confidence. Then you can gradually introduce new tasks as students master the initial ones. This is going to prevent overwhelm and keep students engaged. At this time, the focus is still on the process, not the actual task. You want to teach the routine, model the process step by step. You're showing students exactly how they're going to be choosing that task, completing it, cleaning it up. Repetition is our friend here. You can practice as a group before expecting students to work independently. So it's going to build understanding, confidence, making sure everyone's on the same page. What is your role as students are practicing this very important routine? Well, you're going to be using observation. You're going to be providing positive reinforcement as students are working through this system. You're also going to be there to identify and address any roadblocks. If a student is really struggling, you can reassess the difficulty of the task or the clarity of the instructions. You also want to be flexible. You could adjust the system as needed based on these observations. However, I would definitely wait because you probably have already done a great job of breaking down the routine and students may just need a little bit more time. But of course, you're welcome to adjust. We just want to make sure we're not in reactive mode. Students may just need a little bit more time and that consistency is so important. And my last piece of advice is to stay patient. I know you already are. Remember, building independence takes time. Celebrate those small wins and keep encouraging students. We're starting small so that our students can go on to big things because building independence is kind of a big deal. All of this effort that you're putting in now at the beginning is going to pay off with smoother, more productive classroom routines all year long. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Now it's time for the announcement. This is episode 89 and I'm going to be back in two days with episode 90. So I'll be back on Friday with a bonus podcast episode this week. It's because I am going to be switching the podcast to be released on Fridays instead of Wednesdays. I don't know about you, but Fridays feel pretty magical around here. I always wake up thinking I can accomplish anything. It's Friday. So I'm committed to having a new episode ready for you when you wake up on Friday, you're getting ready, you're driving to school, you've got something to listen to. To make sure this podcast is meeting all of your needs, please click on the Google form in the show notes. I can't wait to hear more about your questions, suggestions, and feedback. Also, if you're listening to this in real time, which is August, 2024, you'll notice on the form that there's a quick giveaway for back to school. Thank you for listening and good luck. And I'll see you back here in two days. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'm dying to ask, what'd you think? Be sure to hit the follow or subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. You can find the show notes and links for everything mentioned in this episode at positivelylearningblog.com. See you next week for more special education solutions.